Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for another deep dive. Yeah, great to be here. You know, gotta give a big shout out to Lit RPG Reads for uh, for this one. Oh, though. definitely. And to Paul Bello for suggesting it. Good old Paul, yeah. Fine fellow. Always got good ideas. Always has good ideas. Absolutely. So this deep dive, uh, we're diving into the ultimate guide to building a tavern for your D&D tabletop campaign. One of my favorite topics. From Lit RPG Reads. I mean, who doesn't love a good tavern, I right? Know. I mean, some of my most memorable D&D sessions oh, yeah. have started in tavern. For sure. Or involved taverns in some way. Absolutely. Um, I've had one campaign that started with a tavern brawl that got so out of control. Oh, wow. That we ended up being framed for a crime we didn't commit. Oh, no. It was awesome. It was so much fun. That's a good start to a campaign right there. Yeah. So it's amazing how these places can become so central to the story. Absolutely. And this guide really emphasizes that. It goes deep into how to make your tavern more than just a place to grab a pint. Right. It's about creating a living, breathing heart of your campaign world. Yeah, it's not just slapping down some tables and chairs and calling it a day. Exactly. You really have to think about the details yeah. to create a place with a story to tell. So let's talk about that starting with the name. Right. It seems so simple, That's but huge. it's huge. Right. They talk about those classic naming conventions like right. the animal and object. Yeah, like the fox and fiddle. Exactly, or the drunken donkey. Classic. Yeah. Um, but then they go beyond that and they talk about yeah. why those conventions work in the first place. It's psychology. Yeah. Our brains just love patterns and familiarity. Right. We see the animal and object and we're like, mm -hmm. okay, I know what kind of place this is. Exactly. It sets expectations. Yeah. But then they challenge you to go further. Yeah. Think about names that hint at a hidden secret. Ooh. Like the Whispering Tankard. Or a name tied to a specific event like the Phoenix's Rest. Okay, oh, after God. a fire? I like that. You know, it sparks curiosity. Oh, yeah. Makes players want to learn more. It's like a little puzzle before they even step foot in the door. Exactly. Oh, and speaking of doors, they get into how the tavern's location and its architecture can tell a story, too. Oh, absolutely. Location is everything. Right. Think about it. A dockside mm -hmm. tavern on creaky pilings over the water. Oh, yeah. It's going to attract a totally different crowd than a cozy mountain tavern. Light, totally different vibe. Totally different vibe. Yeah. Carved into the rock. Like a dwarven stronghold. Right. And it's not just about who hangs out there. Think about secret entrances. Oh, yeah. Hidden rooms. Absolutely. I once ran a game in a tavern that was built into this giant hollowed out tree. Whoa. And That's cool. the party discovered a whole network of tunnels branching out from the cellar. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was awesome. That's a great twist. Yeah, it was really unexpected. It really changes things up. Yeah, and even small details like the placement of pillars. Yeah. Or the arrangement of rooms can create opportunities for intrigue. Absolutely. Is there a dark corner perfect for hushed conversations? Yeah. Or a balcony overlooking the common area where somebody could eavesdrop? Oh, perfect for a rogue right. to sneak around. Suddenly your tavern is like a stage. Yeah for all sorts of social interactions. It's absolutely. And they don't stop there. Oh, no. They go on to talk about how to tailor your tavern to the clientele that you want to attract. This is where it gets really interesting. Yeah, this is where it gets really fun. Yeah. Um, you know, think about it. A rough and tumble failures bar yeah. is going to have a completely different feel absolutely. than a high-end establishment catering to nobles. Right. The menu, the security, the overall ambiance. Everything changes. Everything has to reflect who's coming through the door. Exactly. And they actually have this chart. Oh, yeah. And the guy. The client called. Yeah, yeah, with all these different clientele types and their expected amenities. It's gold mine. Oh, it's amazing. It's like a cheat sheet. For creating mm -hmm. a believable yeah, and engaging yeah. environment. I use it all the time. So imagine a tavern catering to adventurers. Okay, yeah. With yeah. a board for posting quests, a place to check weapons. Yeah, gotta have that. Maybe even a resident sage who can translate ancient texts. Oh, that's a good idea. I know, right? Very useful. And what happens when those adventurers clash with a group of rowdy merchants? Ooh. Celebrating a successful trade deal. Joel. Or... A secretive group of mages whispering in the corner? Yeah. Suddenly you've got this instant social dynamic. Instant conflict. Right. And potential conflict. Yeah. All because you thought about who you wanted to be in your tavern. And who might bump into each other. Exactly. It's all about those interactions. Oh, man. That reminds me of this time. We walked into this tavern. Yeah. And it was very clearly divided. Okay. One side for humans, the other side for orcs. 
Oh, wow. Who are passing through. Yeah. And you could practically feel the tension in the air. Oh. And, of course, our party being the clueless sponge that they were. Oh, no. Accidentally sat on the orc side. Oh, no. It was great. It was so much fun. What happened? It actually ended up being this hilarious role-playing encounter. That's awesome. But it just goes to show how much thought goes into creating yeah. a believable tavern experience. For sure. And speaking of experience, we can't forget about the atmosphere and the ambiance. Oh, this is where the real magic happens. Right. This is where you bring the tavern to life. Make it feel real. And the guide emphasizes engaging all the senses. All of them. It's not just what you see. It's what you hear. It's what you smell. Yeah, even what you feel. They talk about using lighting and the time of day to create different moods. Yeah, like the warm glow of a fireplace on a cold night. Ooh. Versus bright sunlight streaming through the windows during the day. Yeah, totally different vibe. Totally. Right. And how about the placement of that lighting? Oh, yeah. Good point. Maybe the common area is brightly lit. Yeah. Encourage conversation. You know, to encourage socializing. Yeah. But there are dimmer corners. Yeah. For more intimate conversations. Yeah, for secrets. Or what if there's a back room. Yeah. That's lit by a single flickering candle. Ooh, spooky. Ooh, yeah. Mysterious. Creating that sense of mystery and intrigue. I love it. Yeah, and then there's the sound. Oh, yeah. Is your tavern a rowdy place? Uh-huh. With boisterous laughter of drunken patrons? Yeah. Or is it more subdued with the clinking of tankards mm -hmm. and the murmur of conversation? It depends on the tavern. Right. Yeah. They even suggest thinking about how different times of day might call for different musical styles. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like a lute player might set a more relaxed mood for the afternoon crowd. Yeah. But as the evening progresses, a band could really get the energy up. Yeah, get the party started. With some more upbeat tunes. Exactly. And then, of course, there are the smells. Oh, this is important. I'm talking the aroma of baking bread. Yes. Roasting meat. Spilled ale. Can't forget that. Maybe even a hint of wood smoke from the fireplace. Sets the mood. It's like a signature scent for your tavern. It's branding. Yeah. But they suggest going even further. Oh, how so? What if different parts of the tavern had distinct smells? Ooh, interesting. Like the kitchen smells of spices and savory yeah. stews. Yeah. And then the common room has more of an earthy scent okay. of leather and wood polish. I like that. Another layer of depth to the environment. Makes it more real. Yeah. More immersive. Exactly. Yeah. And they don't forget about other sensations either. Oh, right. Like what? Temperature, airflow, even the textures of furniture. Okay. I once played in a tavern where the owner had covered the walls in these thick tapestries. Oh, wow. And you could barely hear the conversation at the next table. Interesting. It created this amazing sense of privacy and intimacy. Oh, I bet. Yeah, it was really cool. So we've talked about the setting, yeah. but what about the people? Oh, the people are key. Yeah. The staff and the management. It's more than just background noise. Right. They can be quest givers. Allies, enemies. <laughs> Sources of information. All of the above. They can really make or break a tavern. Yeah, and they start by focusing on the proprietor. The owner. Right. Yeah. And they say the owner's personality shapes the whole establishment. It makes sense. Right. Yeah. Imagine a retired adventurer <laughs> who's seen it all. Or... A shrewd businesswoman. Okay. Who knows how to make a profit. Yeah. Totally different vibes. Totally different vibe. Yeah. And each one brings a different flavor to the tavern. Absolutely. And their goals and challenges could become hooks for the players. Oh, for sure. Right. Maybe the owner is trying to expand the business. Okay. And needs the party's help securing a loan. Yeah. Or maybe they're being threatened by a local gang. Oh. And suddenly the players are invested in the tavern's fate. They have a stake in it. They have a stake in it, exactly. Yeah, that's a good way to get them involved. Right. Yeah. And it's not just the owner. Oh, right. They emphasize the importance of other key personnel. Like who? The head cook. Yeah. The bouncer. The cellar master. Important people. Yeah. Each one should have their own unique personality. Absolutely. And backstory. Yeah. I once played in a tavern where the head cook was a former pirate. Oh. Wow. With a peg leg and a parrot on his shoulder. That's amazing. He was always getting into trouble. I bet. But he made the best spiced rum cake you've ever tasted. Oh, that's a good trade-off. It was so good. Yeah. But it just goes to show how much those little details can bring a character yeah. and a tavern to life. Absolutely. And then there are the regular servers. Right. And support staff. Yeah, the unsung heroes. Right. They're the ones interacting with the patrons every day. 
They see everything. They see everything. So they're a gold mine of information. And gossip. And local gossip. Yeah, the best kind of gossip. Right. Yeah. And they even suggest creating a diverse cast of servers. Oh, like. With different personalities and backgrounds. Okay. Maybe there's a gossipy server who knows everybody's business. Uh huh. Or a shy server who's saving up for magic school. Uh -huh. Or a jaded server who's seen it all. Seen too much. Yeah. And it adds so much richness Did. to the setting. Yeah. Even the people who clean the tables. Yeah. Or tend the stables. Right. Can have their own stories to tell. Everyone has a story. Exactly. Yeah. And it creates opportunities for the players to connect with the tavern on a more personal level. Oh, absolutely. Maybe they befriend a server who tips them off about a shady deal. Okay. Or they help a stable hand who's being harassed by thugs. Yeah. It makes the tavern feel more like a community. That's what it's all about. Exactly. Yeah, that sense of community. And speaking of community, let's talk about what brings people together. All right. Food and drink. The essentials. The guide has some great tips for making your tavern's offerings memorable. I'm all ears. It's not just about listing generic food and drinks. Right. It has to be special. It's about crafting a menu. Yeah. That reflects the tavern's identity and its place in the world. I like that. And they start by talking about signature drinks. Okay. Every good tavern needs that special beverage that sets it apart. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. It could be anything from a secret family recipe for mead. Classic. To a magical cocktail that changes color based on your mood. Ooh, now that's fancy. Right. Yeah. And they talk about how the menu should connect to the tavern's location. Okay. And the changing seasons. Makes sense. A coastal tavern might specialize in fresh seafood. Yeah. While a mountain establishment could offer hearty stews. Perfect for a cold night. Right. Yeah. And don't forget the regional specialties. Oh, yeah. Maybe there's a dwarven ale house that serves its drinks at specific temperatures or pressures. Ooh, that's a good detail. I know, right? Yeah. Dwarves love their precision. They do. Yeah. Or an elven establishment known for its ancient wines. Ooh, very elegant. Very elegant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like the menu itself tells a story about the tavern. It does. And the world it inhabits. Yeah, it's a part of the world building. Exactly. And they even provide this handy chart. Oh, yeah. For planning your menu and pricing. Okay. With different tiers of food and drink. Right. Ranging from basic fare to luxury items. Gotta have options. Gotta have options. Yeah, for all And get this. They even suggest that the menu itself can be a world building tool. Oh, now that's interesting. Tell me more. Yeah. Yeah. It could be a simple chalkboard behind the bar. Right. Or an elaborately painted sign. Right. Or even magically projected images of available dishes. That's cool. It all depends on the tavern's style. Yeah. And the level of magical sophistication right. in your world. I like that a lot. It's another way to make your tavern unique. Absolute. And memorable. It's all about the details. It really is. Yeah. So we've talked about the food and the drink. Yeah. But what about the entertainment? Oh, yeah. The entertainment, that's where things can get really fun. Yeah, this is where the players can really let loose and enjoy themselves. And the guide goes beyond your typical bard in the corner. Right. Although, I mean, bard is always a classic. A classic for a reason. Yeah. But they encourage you to think bigger. Yeah. Think about traveling troops, storytelling sessions, maybe even magical automatons putting on a show. Ooh. Like clockwork dancers or something. Exactly. Something unique and memorable. It's all about thinking outside the box. Yeah. And they talk about how the type of entertainment should match the time of day. Oh, that's a good point. And the clientele, you know, a quieter, more contemplative performance. Yeah. Might be perfect for a lazy afternoon crowd. Yeah, like a solo harpist or something. It's exactly. But as the evening progresses, yeah. you might want to bring in a full band. Yeah, get the energy up. Get the party started. And don't forget about the plot hooks. Oh, man. Maybe the party overhears a crucial piece of information. Okay. During a bard song. Or they get challenged to a game by a mysterious stranger. Yeah. The entertainment can be a catalyst for all sorts of adventures. For sure. It adds another layer to the tavern. Yeah. It's not just background noise. It's yeah. part of the story. And they don't limit themselves to music either. Oh, right. Like what else? They suggest thinking about games that reflect the local culture. Oh, interesting. Maybe a dwarven tavern. Yeah. Has these complex strategy games. Oh, okay. Played with mining tokens. That's cool. I know, right? Very dwarven. Yeah. Yeah. While a coastal establishment features games yeah. based on navigation or trade. Makes sense. Yeah, it's like the games themselves become a part of the world building. 
They're not just generic games. It they could, have a history and a meaning. They have a purpose. <laughs> yeah. And of course, there's gambling. Always going to have gambling. But they even talk about that. Oh, yeah. How do they suggest spicing it up? Setting clear house rules, having dedicated gaming rooms yeah. with professional dealers, maybe even magical anti cheating measures. Ooh, to keep things fair. To keep things fair. Yeah. I can see it now. The party gets caught up in this high stakes card game. Yeah. With a group of shady characters. <laughs> only to discover they're being cheated. Oh no. With subtle illusions. That's a good twist. Talk about raising the stakes. Yeah, literally. And then you've got special events and celebrations. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Weekly quiz nights, monthly feasts honoring local deities. Okay. Annual celebrations marking the tavern's founding. That's a sense of history. That's a sense of history and community. Yeah, it makes the tavern feel like a real place. And it gives the players a reason to keep coming back. Absolutely. Imagine the party returning to their favorite tavern yeah. after a long adventure, just in time for the annual pie-eating contest. Oh, that's fun. I know, right? Yeah. Or the grand opening of the newly renovated back room. I love it. It makes the tavern feel alive. It really does. It's a living, breathing part of the world. For sure. But, okay, even the most welcoming tavern needs to think about security. Right. Oh, absolutely. You don't want to be caught off guard. Nobody wants to get ambushed by a band of goblins. Yeah, or a rival adventuring party. Right. Yeah, those can be even worse. Yeah. Yeah. And the guide goes into detail about different types of security measures. Okay. Both physical and magical. Right. They start with the basics, reinforced doors. Yeah. Well-lit areas, maybe even a back door for quick escapes. Good for a hasty retreat. And they suggest thinking about the layout of the tavern from a security standpoint. Oh, interesting. Like strategically placed exits. Exactly. Clear sight lines for the staff. Makes sense. It's all about creating a space that can be defended if necessary. You never know when you might need to hunker down. I once played in a game where the tavern had a secret escape tunnel. Ooh, tell me more. That led to a hidden network of sewers beneath the city. That's cool. It was awesome. It came in handy when a rival adventuring party tried to ambush us. Ah, oh, that's a lifesaver. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. It's like having a built-in escape route for those things went sideways moments. Exactly. You always need a backup plan. And then they talk about magical security measures. Oh. Which I think is where things get really interesting. Yeah, magic always makes things more interesting. We're talking alarm spells, wards to detect hostile magic. Okay. Maybe even truth-compelling zones near the gambling tables to prevent cheating. Oh, that's a good idea. Right. Yeah. And imagine if the tavern owner was a retired wizard. Oh, wow. They might have all sorts of magical defenses set up. Yeah, like enchanted golems guarding the entrance. Yeah, or illusions that make the tavern appear abandoned. Oh, that's sneaky. Right. Yeah. To anyone with ill intentions. A good way to deter trouble. Right. Yeah. But even with all the best security in the world, yeah. you still need people who know what they're doing. Right, you need a good staff. The guide emphasizes the importance of a well-trained staff. Absolutely. Who can handle different situations. Yeah. They need to be prepared for anything. And they suggest having clear protocols for dealing with everything. Okay. From minor disturbances, right. a bar fight, yeah. <laughs> to full-blown emergencies. Look like a dragon attack. Right. Yeah. Maybe a minor brawl just needs a stern warning from the bouncer. Right. But a magical attack could trigger a lockdown and a call for reinforcements. Makes sense. Different situations call for different responses. It's all about having a system in place so that everyone knows what to do when things get hairy. Preparedness is key. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, but now for the part I know you've been waiting for. Right. Hidden features and secrets. Oh yeah, every good tavern needs a little mystery. And they suggest thinking about the tavern's history as a source of inspiration. Okay. Maybe there's a smuggler's tunnel from a time when the tavern was a front. Oh, wow. For illegal activities. That's cool. Or a hidden room that was sealed off okay. after a tragic event. Spoo! Or maybe there's a secret society that meets in the cellar. Or a hidden treasure vault behind a false wall. Yeah, I love those. It's all about adding that extra layer of intrigue to the setting. It gives the players something to discover. I love those moments in games when the players discover something hidden. Yeah. And they're like, whoa, what's going on here? Their eyes light up. Yeah, it's so much fun. Yeah. And it's not just about hidden rooms and tunnels. Oh, right. They talk about information networks that operate within taverns. Okay. Think about the Gothopy servers. Yeah. The bartenders who overhear everything. Right. The regulars who have their ears to the ground. They know all the secrets. They can be 
valuable sources of information for the players. Yeah. But they can also be dangerous if crossed. You don't want to get on their bad side. Information is power. And in a tavern, it's often traded like currency. It's a valuable commodity. Yeah. You never know who might be listening or what secrets they might be willing to share for a price, of course. Exactly. Got to keep your wits about you. Yeah. That's why taverns are so much fun. Yeah. They're full of possibilities. And that leads us to what really sets a tavern apart. All right. What's that? It's unique features and magical elements. Oh, yeah. We're talking about more than just your run-of-the-mill, rooms-available, ale-on-tap kind of place. Exactly. We're talking about creating a tavern that stands out, that has right. personality. I like it. So what kind of unique features are we talking about? Well, they break it down into two categories, magical conveniences and architectural oddities. Okay. Let's start with the magical conveniences. All right. So I'm thinking self-filling mugs. Oh, that's a classic. Enchanted mirrors that let you try on different outfits. Okay. Maybe even temperature controlling runes. Ooh, sexy. To keep your drink at the perfect temperature. I could use one of those. I know, right? Yeah. They even suggest things like musical instruments that play themselves. Oh, wow. During quiet periods or mood sensing lights. Okay. That change color to match the atmosphere. That's cool. It's like the tavern has a life of its own. It's all about those little touches of magic that enhance the tavern experience. But they caution against going overboard, right? Right. Too much magic can make the tavern feel less grounded in reality. It's all about finding that balance. Right. Yeah, between magical enhancement and a sense of believability. Exactly. And that's where the architectural oddities come in. Okay, tell me more. So we're talking about those visually striking features that make a tavern truly memorable. Oh, I love these. Give me some examples. Okay, so a massive tree growing through the center of the building. Okay. A retractable roof for stargazing. Ooh, that's nice. Rooms built into giant mushrooms. Interesting. Floating platforms connected by magical bridges. I like it. The possibilities are endless. And they should be more than just visually appealing. Right. They should have a purpose. Exactly. Maybe that giant tree is actually a source of magical energy. Okay. Or those floating platforms are part of some ancient ritual. Yeah. It makes them more than just decorations. It's about making those unusual features an integral part of the tavern story. I like that. Giving them a reason for being there. So it's not just random weirdness. No, it's all connected. It's all part of the world building. And that reminds us that a tavern doesn't exist in a vacuum. Right. It's part of a larger world. Yeah, with its own political and economic and social structures. Exactly. And the guide stresses the importance of integrating the tavern into this wider world. Okay, so how do they suggest doing that? Well, they say think about its relationship with local law enforcement. Okay. Merchant guilds, noble houses, even the thieves' guild. Yeah, the tavern could be connected to all sorts of factions. Maybe the tavern owner has a standing agreement with the city guard okay. to report any suspicious activity. Makes sense. Or perhaps they secretly donate a portion of their profits to a local temple. Interesting. Those connections can create opportunities or challenges for the players. Yeah, depending on their actions and allegiances. And it's not just about politics and power. Oh, right. They talk about the economic connections a tavern has. Okay. It's part of a supply chain. Yeah. It might have financial relationships with local moneylenders. Okay. It might even invest in other businesses or properties. It makes the tavern feel like a real part of the local economy. Exactly. With its own successes and struggles. And it opens up possibilities for the players to get involved. Oh. They Maybe they help the tavern owner secure a lucrative trade deal. Oh, okay. Or they foil a plot to sabotage the business. Interesting. It's all about making the tavern feel like a dynamic and interconnected part of the world. I like that it gives it more depth. Yeah, and it gives the players more agency. Right. They can actually influence the tavern's fate. But let's face it, even the best-run tavern can't avoid a little chaos now and then. That's true. Things happen. Right. Yeah. And the guide suggests creating systems for generating random events and encounters. Ooh, I like this, to keep things interesting. Yeah, to keep things unpredictable. And they divide these into two categories, daily occurrences and extraordinary events. Okay, what are daily occurrences? So daily occurrences are those little things that happen all the time. Like a delivery dispute. Yeah, or a lost item, a gossip circle, a bard starting up a new song. Right, it's the background noise of tavern life. The stuff that makes it feel lively and unpredictable. Yeah. And they even provide a table with suggestions for each time of day. Oh, that's handy. So you can roll a die and see what happens. That's fun. I like that. And then there are the extraordinary events. Okay. The things that don't happen every day. Right. But have a bigger impact when they do. 
Like what kind of extraordinary events? Oh, they suggest things like surprise inspections from the authorities. Okay. Visits from famous personalities. Interesting. Magical accidents or manifestations. Ooh. Criminal activities or investigations. Even natural disasters. Whoa. That escalated quickly. It's all about shaking things up. Yeah. And throwing the players a curveball. <laughs> I love it. But they remind us that these events should be rare enough. Right. To feel special. Yeah. If every night is a chaotic brawl, it loses its impact. Exactly. It's about finding that balance between routine and surprise. And speaking of balance, they also suggest creating custom mechanics and special rules right. that make your tavern more than just a backdrop. Right. They want to give players a reason to care about the tavern. And its inhabitants. Yeah, make them feel invested. And one of the ideas they propose is a reputation system. Oh, tell me more about that. So this tracks how different groups view the tavern. Okay. And its patrons, including the players. Interesting. So maybe the party gains a reputation for being troublemakers. Uh-oh. Which makes it harder to get served or find information. That makes sense. Or perhaps they become known as heroes after saving the tavern from a band of goblins. Okay. And now they get free drinks and special favors. I like that. Rewards for good behavior. It makes the players' actions have consequences, yeah. both good and bad. Right. It makes them think about their choices. Exactly. And it gives them a reason to think about how they behave in the tavern. Yeah. You don't want to ruin your reputation. And they suggest thinking about the benefits and consequences. Okay. Of having different reputation levels with various factions. Like what kind of benefits and consequences? Maybe a high reputation with the Thieves Guild gives you access to stolen goods. Okay. But a low reputation with the City Guard means you're more likely to get stopped and searched. That makes sense. It's a great way to add another layer of depth to the setting. Yeah. It makes the world feel more real. And give the players more agency in shaping their characters' destinies. I like that. And honestly, that's what this whole guide is about, right? What's that? It's about making your tavern a living, breathing part of the world. Yeah. A place that feels real and engaging for the players. Absolutely. It's about taking that humble tavern. Yeah. And transforming it into a catalyst for adventure. Ooh. A source of intrigue. A place where legends are made. I love that. And the best part is. What's that? It's all up to you. You, the game master. You get to decide what kind of tavern you want to create. Yeah. And how it fits into your world. The possibilities are endless. This has been awesome. I'm already brainstorming ideas for my next campaign. Me too. But you know, they're not done yet. Oh, there's more. They got even more tips for making your tavern truly memorable. Okay, well, let's take a quick break. Uh, and then we'll dive into those right after this. All right, so we're back and ready to dive into those final tips for making your D&D &D tavern truly memorable. Yeah, and you know, one thing they really emphasized was this idea that a tavern isn't static. Right. It should evolve and change. Along with the campaign. Right. Yeah, it's not just a fixed location. It's like that saying, if these walls could talk. Oh, yeah. Well, in a D&D &D tavern, they kind of can. They've seen a lot of things. They've seen a lot, and they've got the stories to prove it. For sure. The guide calls it living history. I like that. And it's such a cool concept. Yeah, it makes the tavern feel more real. Think about it. If your tavern's been around for a while, yeah, it's going to bear the marks of its past. Absolutely. Maybe there are scorch marks on the ceiling. Okay. A magical duel. Yeah. Or a table with a plaque that reads, Reserve for the Heroes of Black Rock Mountain. Ooh, nice touch. Those little details bring the tavern to life. They do. And create a sense of continuity. It's like the tavern has its own memories. And it doesn't have to be just cosmetic. Right. Maybe the tavern has physically changed over time. Uh. An expansion added after a successful business venture. Yeah. A new wing built with the reward money from a dangerous quest. Makes sense. It's like the tavern grows alongside the characters in the story. I like that it's a visual representation of progress. And they even suggest creating a timeline of events that have shaped the tavern's history. Oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah. Like, what kind of events? It could include everything from its founding and major renovations to famous visitors and even natural disasters. It survived. Wow, that's a lot of history. It's like giving the tavern its own backstory. Yeah, and that can be a goldmine for plot hooks. Right. Maybe the party discovers a hidden journal oh. detailing a secret society that used to meet in the cellar. Ooh, interesting. Or they uncover a curse that was placed on the tavern generations ago. That's a good one. Suddenly the tavern becomes a key part of the adventure. Yeah, it's not just a place to hang out. And the best part. What's that? The players can contribute to this living history. 
Oh, I like that. Their actions can leave a lasting impact on the tavern. How so? Maybe it's a trophy from a slain monster mounted above the fireplace. Okay, yeah. Or a new dish named after a beloved character. That's cool. It makes the players feel like they're part of the tavern story. It gives them a sense of ownership. It's not just a place they visit. Right. It's a place they help shape. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. Speaking of shaping the story, the guide reminds us that a tavern is ultimately a catalyst for adventure. Absolutely. It's wow. not just a place to rest and relax. Right. It's a starting point, a meeting place, a hideout, a and sanctuary. They, they list all sorts of potential roles for a tavern. Yeah. A place where rumors are traded. Yeah. Alliances are forged. Mm -hmm. Heroes celebrate their victories and lick their wounds. It's a place for everything. It could even be a place of refuge for those fleeing persecution. Okay. Or a secret meeting ground for rebels plotting against a tyrannical ruler. I like that it adds a layer of political intrigue. The possibilities are endless. It really drives home the point that a tavern is so much more than just a building. Right. It's a crossroads, a nexus of stories and possibilities. Exactly, and with a little imagination. Yeah. It could become one of the most memorable and engaging locations in your campaign. For sure. And, you know, I think that's what separates a good D&D tavern from a great one. Okay. What's that? It's up? that intangible sense of belonging. That feeling of being welcomed and accepted. Like a home away from home. It's about creating a space where the players feel comfortable letting their guard down. Yeah, where their characters can relax. Connect with each other. Yeah. And maybe even form lasting bonds with the tavern's inhabitants. It's a place where they can be themselves. And it's not something you can force or manufacture. Right, it has to be organic. It comes from the little details. Yeah. The shared experiences, the stories that unfold within the tavern's walls. It's the heart of the tavern. And the guide encourages game masters to foster this sense of home. Okay. By being open to collaboration with their players. I like that. Let the players contribute to the tavern story. Suggest names for new drinks. Yeah. Even come up with ideas for special events. It makes the players feel more invested. It's like we were saying before. Yeah. The more the players feel invested in the tavern, uh huh. the more it will feel like a place they truly belong. And don't be afraid to let the tavern change and evolve based on the player's actions. Right. Maybe they help the proprietor expand the business. Okay. Or defend it from a monstrous attack. Those shared experiences will forge a connection. Yeah. That goes beyond just visiting a location on a map. So what does it all mean? Yeah. What are the key takeaways from this deep dive into the world of D&D &D taverns? Well, first and foremost, remember that a tavern is more than just a place to grab a drink. Right. It's a reflection of your world. Yeah. A microcosm of its cultures, its history, and its people. Give it a unique identity, a story that sets it apart from all the other taverns in your campaign world. Think about the details that bring it to life. Yeah. The sights, the sounds, the smells, even the textures. Populate it with memorable characters who can become allies, enemies, or sources of information for the players. And don't be afraid to get creative. Right. Yeah, magical conveniences, architectural oddities, secret rooms, hidden passages. The more unique and interesting your tavern is, the more it will capture the player's imaginations. Most importantly, remember that a tavern is a place for storytelling. Yeah. It's a stage for adventures, a backdrop for drama, a haven for weary travelers. Make it a place where the players feel welcome, a place where their characters can grow and change a place that feels like home. And on that note... Yeah. A huge thanks again to our friend, Paul Bello. Fine fellow indeed. For suggesting this fantastic deep dive topic. And to Lit RPG Reads for providing such a comprehensive and inspiring guide. Absolutely. Until next time, adventurers. Yeah. May your taverns be filled with laughter, good company, and stories that will be told for generations to come. And remember. The most memorable taverns. Are the ones that feel like home.